Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Living Critically. Um, hopefully we're back. I've been a little absent since my surgery, but um, so tonight we have the friendly atheist on again because um, he came on a couple weeks ago. Welcome. If you recall, I did uh, another panel, secular Sunday service show, but it was on Monday. Um, we had a panel, we talked about politics and Emmett has never been on my channel alone before. Plus he is very well versed in the subject. So I thought we oh, had more to talk about. We do, sure. So um, would, would you mind just introducing yourself really yes. quick for, in case anybody doesn't know who you are? For, which sure. Right. for <laughs> sure. Um, So my name is Hemant. I write at friendlyatheist.com. If you're on YouTube, you can find my channel by searching for Friendly Atheist. And I write about politics and current events issues. YouTube is more just me having fun with other stories and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I've worked with atheist organizations. Uh, I've been doing solo, just writing about this stuff for a very long time. And so um, I enjoy talking about it with people instead of just doing this on my computer all day. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. And so I'm, I'm wondering, um, you know, from, from our interactions, you you are very friendly and everybody I've spoken to about you. Like, oh, he's this guy. So is it, but you get, I, I just noticed you get very passionate when you talk about certain things. I don't know if that's, passion itself or if you are really truly the friendly atheist no i i'm a dick in person but <laughs> i here's like i think i think like a lot of atheists who might be watching this a lot of atheists who are on youtube like who to the point where you care about this stuff enough where you're like i'm gonna make a channel and talk about this or whatever yeah you get passionate about this stuff i think the thing that has made me more vocal um like in recent years and stuff is less if people believe in god i mean i think it's wrong but i genuinely find it hard to get worked up over if someone's yeah. religious but i get seriously mad when it involves politics because i think like religion is a hard thing to try to argue people out of because you're believing yeah. in things that are taken on faith it's hard to steer people away from that um and also i've had those discussions like it's not new. It's not interesting to me as much as it used to be. But yeah. when it comes to politics, in some sense, I genuinely think it's an easier thing to argue um, because it should be based on facts. We could see the results right in front of us. And yet the same kind of bad critical thinking and irrationality and just look, the harm is right here. We can all see it. Why are you allowing this? And when people still make stupid decisions, like that bugs me way more. And I think, I forgot if we mentioned this last time we talked, I think when I was a baby atheist or something, I genuinely thought if you told me your religious beliefs, it would give me a really easy way. If you told me right now you were a Christian, I would probably get an easy sense of what things motivate you and drive you and what you're passionate about and how you think about issues. And then, of course, it's easy to say, well, it depends if you're like a progressive Christian or a conservative Christian, but the same rules apply. If you tell me you go to a white evangelical church or a black Protestant church or a Southern Baptist church, I kind of I know who you are within a few seconds. And the truth is, I think in recent years, especially your religious label, and that includes atheist and agnostic and whatever, it really doesn't tell me anything about you. Because if someone tells me they're an atheist, I think I stupidly used to think, oh, well, then you're smart. Then <laughs> then I want to talk to you about all these things that we totally have yeah. in common. And that's so not the case. And, mm. and maybe I was just naive to not realize that earlier. But I really don't know anything about anyone. But if you tell me who you're voting for or who you wanted to vote for in the primary... I think I really do understand where you're coming from and what you're what you think about, how you think about things. And so, yeah, I definitely feel like politics is a bigger driving force for me, even though I'm coming at it from a place of atheism and religion and things like that. Um, this is a question from the chat. By the way, anybody who has yeah. questions, just uh, tag Mathbag, please. Um, it says, are you ex-Christian or ex-Hindu? I am actually ex-Jain, which is a smaller Indian religion that, uh, J-A-I-N, if you want to Wikipedia that thing. But um, it's it's a religion that is based on nonviolence more than anything else. And so philosophically, it's actually pretty decent. 
they believe we shouldn't hurt other people in thought, in spirit, physically. Um, they also believe in karma and reincarnation and supernatural ideas. If not a god per se, they believe in the supernatural. That's what I feel like I broke away from when I was younger. And yeah. so I don't think it's fair to call myself a Jain, like even culturally, because I don't believe mm -hmm. any of that stuff. But um, yeah, it's, so it's not Hindu at all, uh, though I, obviously that uh, people will say that a lot because that's the one everyone's familiar with. Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. No, my son, when he um, he first came to me as an atheist, because I, I didn't tell him I was an atheist. Um, I just yeah. taught him about the different religions and let him decide for himself. Um, he came out, well, he said he was an agnostic atheist, but he also said he was a Buddhist atheist because he believed <laughs> in some of the tenets of Buddhism. So right. it kind of falls along the same line. So Yeah, and I don't know about you, like I care a lot less about labels too for the exact same reason mm -hmm. I was talking yeah. about earlier. It doesn't tell me much. And look, whatever mm -hmm. suits your purposes, if you feel it describes you well, so be it. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I, I'm way more interested in what people are doing um, if they take religion so seriously that, like your son, they take that label, like they get very specific with it. Yeah, that's fine. What are you doing with it? And I hope mm -hmm. whoever people are, if they're religious too, like show me what you're doing with that because you clearly care about it. You're clearly guided by those principles somehow. So what are you doing to show it? Mm -hmm. I think I had because I'm relatively new to the to the community. Um, uh, you know, I've been around for about a year, been on, on YouTube for yeah. um, about half that time. And I think I had the same idea when I first started that, oh, atheists, they're going to be smart and they're right. going to, you know, think similarly to me. And I don't, it just. Well, I think for a lot of us, it's when we, a lot of us are coming from religious backgrounds, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so when we figure out, like, wait a minute, God doesn't exist, mm -hmm. we're, that was wrong and we figured that out, we feel really smart. Mm -hmm. um, like we know something that most other people have not figured out yet. And there's a power in that. And honestly, I, I say this and it sounds weird, but like, I think this is why conspiracy theories are also really powerful online. And I don't care how stupid they are, whether it's the flat earth stuff or um, <laughs> the, the pandemic thing. It's you get people who probably in their online circles or Facebook circles or whatever, they're not the necessarily the ones everyone thinks like these are the smart ones. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to a conspiracy theory, they think like, oh, the earth is flat. I figured out something that none of those PhDs know. And then yeah. they feel really good about that. And then it's easy now more than ever to find other people who believe the same stuff. And yeah. so now you're like, we all get it, but everyone else doesn't. I definitely felt that way when I became an atheist because I didn't really know anyone else who was. And so when I started meeting a few other people, it's like, we get it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I get the thinking, like you said, when you join YouTube, I get the thinking like, yeah, it, I'm going to, when I talk to other atheists, of course, they're going to be smart. And hopefully that applies to all these other parts of their world too. And it obviously is anyone who's been on YouTube and searched for atheists for mm -hmm. a while. Like that's clearly not true. Yeah. So you, you spoke about um, how, you know, you get a better sense of who a person is in terms of who they're voting for. But um, I think that's kind of difficult sometimes when it comes to the right, because there are a lot of like single issue voters. Do you find that to be a problem? Because I know in terms of like this, Trump cult, yeah, um, and and them being very hardcore and following him. A lot of his evangelical base, even his Christian base, do so simply because he claims to be um, pro life, even though he right. has admittedly tried to pay for abortions before. Doesn't I'm matter. sure. <laughs> yeah, um, no, he actually like threw money at at a woman, um, said it wasn't his, and it that he admitted it. it okay, spreading. False rumors or anything. But, so when it comes to like abortion, though, like I, no. I honestly, if evangelical Christians and conservative Catholics and whoever else says, if they were honest and just said, I hate Trump, I recognize that he's like a threat to our democracy for whatever reasons you want to name. But I am a single issue voter when it comes to abortion. 
Trump is going to put justices who will overturn Roe v. Wade. And that is all I care mm -hmm. about. And if the country sets on fire and dies, it does not matter to me because I'm pro-life and I don't care if you die. Like, if they were just honest and said, this issue matters to me, he's doing the things I want. Oh, I mean, that would be more honest. I would still argue back. I don't think, I think if you're trying to reduce abortion rates, you're better off electing a Democrat anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's a different argument to have. But yeah. it's like, just be honest about that. Just say you're a single issue voter, you'll like your guns. And that's it. You don't care about anything else or anyone else. But but they never say that. Like the, the pastors, the conservative uh, Christians, especially, which I follow, when they talk about him, it's not just that he's doing what they want on the courts or the judges. They genuinely mm. think he is like God sent to do all these other things yeah. that he's not doing like if you think he's saving democracy if you think he's good for international relation whatever you want to say stop pretending he is he's totally not by any metric like how many former people who work at these departments have to come out and say no it was really bad under him how many books do they have to write how many current like senators i think john cornyn mm -hmm. of texas today was like telling a newspaper in texas oh i mean privately i told him he's wrong about everything Dude, the guy voted with him every single time, and now he's trying to run away from him. Like, mm -hmm. just be honest and say you don't actually care about any of this stuff. You're just, you either want power. Like, honestly, why can't Christians just say, look, I have power with him. I get access to the Oval Office. They mm -hmm. listen to me. Um, just say that. I would respect that. I mean, I would be angry, but, like, I get yeah. that. But they yeah. don't say that. They don't say they're single-issue voters. They don't, when they're pro-life, it's only, like, up until birth, and then they don't give a damn about oh, yeah. you. And so, mm -hmm. like, the hypocrisy still exists, but but they won't even be honest about that. That's, I think, that's annoying. It is annoying, and it's, it's scary, too, because the fact that they disassociate themselves so much from what's actually happening, not only in the world, but in our country and politics and all of it, you know, and to just simply say... That's it. You know, I, I, this is the one one issue I care about. Right. And, you know, and but you mentioned um, how they they keep believing him, though, but in these yeah. lies that have been proven over and over again to be lies. Do you think that's part of the reason is because they care so much about whatever the single issue is or if it be a politician, whether it be getting them that road to power? So obviously I can't speak for them and I, I'm sure if they're listening, like, I don't want to miss, I don't want to mistake yeah. their beliefs here. But I mean, this is the same issue we come across as atheists too, right? We feel like, look, the evidence is so overwhelming that everything you believe in is wrong, but mm -hmm. it's not enough. Like you can't just say, here's a list of biblical contradictions. So now you don't believe anymore. It's never that easy. There's an emotional component to it. And so it depends. Like, Who's in their life circle? Who who do they talk to or have to talk to on a regular basis? I suspect a lot of the people who vote for Trump are very much, I mean, I don't even think I'm making this up. I'm pretty sure the numbers have borne this out. Like they don't work with a very diverse group of people. They don't live or uh, live near a diverse group of people. They, they surround themselves by people who act and think the way they do. That's why in like the biggest cities in the country, no matter what state you're living in, by the way, even in deeply red states, mm -hmm. the big cities where everyone's re regularly around each other, you see people who are not like you all the time, are mm -hmm. heavily democratic. Um, yeah. That's why college towns are heavily democratic. Mm -hmm. But in states where there's a lot of space where you can totally create your own bubble, of course they're going to be redder states. So like... I think it's a lot more, it's not logic. Logic clearly isn't getting through to them because it's very easy to live your life in a bubble where you don't get, you don't have to surround yourself with that. Yeah. So that, it makes it harder to get through to them. But I mean, I've, I've seen this from uh, people who outside a pandemic would go door to door trying to talk to people and tell them to vote for their preferred candidate. How do you do it? you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. Don't let them hear about, I don't know, Bernie from the media. It's, listen, I'm voting for Bernie. Let me tell you why he's good. And you got arguments that you've been dying to tell someone, good, I'm right, bring it. 
let me answer mm -hmm. them. I mean, same thing with religion too. Like I hate arguing with religious people online. I don't do it as much as I can avoid it. Certainly not like through email mm -hmm. and I get emails, <laughs> I get the tweets and I don't, I don't bother. Why bother? Um, mm -hmm. But if I met you in person, I would be much more willing to have that conversation because that's a diff. like now you're not doing it for show. Yeah. I don't know. So I feel like I can persuade you more easily in person. So with the political thing, yeah, it is definitely hard to get through to people who seem to never listen to reason and maybe they don't get exposed to it or they just assume it's fake because they surround themselves by people who keep telling them it's fake. And the one thing you get at church and you get at Fox News and you get at talk radio are these voices of authority that tell you, I did the work for you. I did the critical thinking for you. I know what I'm talking about. Just listen to me and you don't have to think for yourself. Just take it from me. I know what I'm talking about. And they sound authoritative and they sound trustworthy. Like you'll never hear a uh, or rarely hear like Rush Limbaugh or a pastor or whoever say, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if this is true. I think this is what's going on. They never say that. Yeah. Alex Jones doesn't talk that way. It's always, Please. I know what's going on. This is what's going on. And they speak with that voice of like, don't you dare disagree with me. And that's, if you are surrounded by that, it's hard to grow out of that. Yeah. You know, we have um, this huge problem too right now of a dis disproportionate amount of power being handed over to, you know, the smaller group, you know, the, the, the white Christians that are in the center of the country because of, you know, this whole issue with the way we vote. But you, you were speaking before about the fact that, you know, it's, it's a harder problem when you are in a less diverse area and these this is this echo chamber almost in and of itself of, uh, you know, these white Christians, specifically white evangelicals that, you know, have disproportionately more power than a lot of the rest of the yeah. country because of the electoral college. How do we even start to tackle that issue? Well, first of all, like, I think one thing to acknowledge is that even in those red states, um, I think Beto O'Rourke said this in 2018 when he was running. He's like, I'm not trying to convince them to vote for me. I'm not trying to change their minds. That is a hard thing to do. The truth, what he was arguing was that there are way more non-voters that probably would vote for me. They just don't care or they're, they've given up on the political process or whatever. Let me reach out to them. And the truth is, like, even in those places where people are in bubbles and stuff, there are a lot of people who are looking for alternatives. I, I've made this argument before, like if you're looking for an atheist group in person on a college campus, when you graduate, whatever it is, you would have a much easier time finding a group like that if you don't live in a big city, I should say, where you can find anything. But you would have an easier time finding a group like that in a place like Alabama than you would a place like, I don't know, Vermont or Massachusetts that's fairly liberal, because in Alabama, you need a group yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, like, they exist. You just got to reach out to them. You got to find them. And the truth is, when you ask people, including the Trump supporters, like, what do you think about this specific policy? But you don't call it Obamacare. It's like, let me just tell you what it does. Do you like that? They're fine with it. They like it. Do you like Social Security? Yeah, yeah they like that. Like, if you go issue by issue and you don't use the talking points that they're used to, and you don't say the names of the politicians, you know, that they've already been prejudging, good or bad. They're usually on, like, liberal side of policy issues, too. Not all of them, but but sometimes. Um, yeah. I noticed a comment someone made on the side, like, we're talking about the bubbles and stuff, and here we are, two of us talking in a bubble, which is true, but I would, I, I would push back with this. Um, I have spoken, I do speak regularly to people who are religious and we do the same sort of conversation. I, I'm not a fan of debates, but we will talk about these issues and have this sort of conversation. Um, and I would also say I try regularly to read and listen to people I disagree with because I want to know what they're saying and how they're saying it. Yeah. And so I feel like I do my best to make sure I know how the other bubbles are doing, what they're up to. Um, like I could tell you how Fox News works and mm. who their people are and the way they do things. I would argue, I would guess that 
like regular Fox News viewers probably don't know how things work on MSNBC, for example. They're not polar opposites, mm -hmm. but like they don't know how it works. I think people who read foxnews.com or Breitbart have no idea what the fact checking process is at the Washington mm. Post or the New York Times. They just, they have no idea how it actually works. And so when they see something like the, uh, what's the, the uh, conspiracy theory they're laying against Hunter Biden or something in the New York Post right now, um, yeah, it is a hoax, or at least it hasn't been confirmed. But basically the people just came to them and said, we have a story for you. They didn't do much fact checking. I think no. Rudy Giuliani even said, I went to them because I, do, I know they're not gonna look into this. They're, they're not gonna try to disprove it, by which he means they're not gonna fact check this. So he gave it to the people who would publish it anyway, because that's how they work. That's how they work at right-wing websites where it's like, oh, you heard a rumor, run with it. Whereas legitimate news outlets wouldn't ever do that, or at least in their best days, they wouldn't do that. Yeah. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Did you just hit something? Mm, that's fine. Um, okay, well then, uh, uh, you know, um, Oh, yeah. No, and I, you know, I think I spoke with this last time you were on. I have um, family that are very conservative and all they watch is Fox News. And, I, you know, I just, I don't get, because there are, oh, there you go. Um, there are times that, that I will read stuff that is, you know, it sides with what I believe in and things like that. But I still, you know, you have to make sure to double check your sources and think yeah. critically and, and question things. You never take stuff just at, at there are you. There are so many tips, story tips I get mm -hmm. daily um, by well-meaning people who are like, this happened over here and stuff. And it's the same process every time. It's like, where's the source coming from? What am I basing it on? What's the date on the story? What's the source for it? Because a lot of yeah. websites look legit and then you look into it and it's totally not. And I feel like I have to do that because I don't want to put out misinformation or I would at least feel really bad about it if I did. Um, and it's not that I'm perfect. I, I'm, I know that I published stuff where I'm like, I didn't have the information I needed. Um, but I actually, I do try to do that. And I think most responsible yeah. people would at least uh, try to check out what they're doing. And I appreciate that. There are like a lot of YouTubers too that will say, I'm going to recap a story for you, but they are checking with a bunch of sources and talking about how it's being written and how it's being said. One thing I just posted this today, I think, uh, Ken Ham, the creationist, uh, was writing about politics, which is not his usual thing. But one thing that I noticed is that he was saying, here's what three different news websites said about some issue. Mm -hmm. And the quotes are like, very opinionated and political. It's like, I forgot the specifics here, but it's like Kamala Harris. You need it again. That's happening. But yeah. he was saying something like Kamala Harris is, let's say, good from the Washington Post. I'm like, why would the Washington Post say that? That doesn't make sense. And I found the quotation and they were in the middle of an article quoting yeah. somebody else, but it appeared on the web. Okay, whatever. But one thing that I noticed is like, he never links to the actual sources mm -hmm. because I don't think he trusts his readers to go there himself. He doesn't want them to see it in context. He wants to be the filter for them. And I know personally, like I would never do that. Like if I'm quoting somebody, I'm gonna show you the video. I'm gonna give you the yeah. link so you can see the original for yourself. Cause I want you to know for yourself. I'm not taking this out of context. I'm not making it up. If you think I am, go look at the source. I would give it to you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a routine thing on the right, where they just say, this is the thing that's going on without showing you kind of how the sauce is made. Yeah. And there's so many exposés on regular news media websites saying like, I, I think my favorite one of that is when Roy Moore, the, the alleged pedophile from Alabama, was running for Senate a few years ago. There was a woman who went to the Washington Post and said something like, uh, she was also a victim of his. 
and what was the story behind it was she was going to tell the reporter like, oh, yeah, he he molested me. Then the Washington Post would put a story like, oh, my God, Roy Moore also attacked this other girl. <laughs> and then they would say, no, he didn't. That was a lie. And they fell for it. You can't trust them. Mm -hmm. And the truth was they they didn't just believe what she said and run with it. They said, OK, well, who is this person? They looked into her. They realized she was basically a, a plant from a right wing group. And yeah. so they met her in person and confronted her about it. And she basically ran away. And that was their story. But it's just like, what did you think they were going to do? Just run with the story without checking it? They're not dumb. Yeah. That's what your yeah. group does. Like, mm -hmm. They have professionals. It's, yeah. It's just the I try to break out of that bubble. I hope everyone. Yeah try to break out of that bubble when you hear something and again as someone who is i think it would be fascinating to figure out that something that my side believes is totally wrong like that would actually be a fun article to write whatever the subject is mm -hmm. but more often than not when it comes to that sort of thing i end up on my side because when you look at all the evidence available like i try to live in reality so yeah, it's not that's why you're on that side though yeah you know, my, my son, like I told you earlier, he's 16 and he, ugh, they, uh, I don't know if it's that age group or what, but he is constantly inundated with crazy conspiracy theories. Like not, you know, the bigger ones that like people like us deal with that flat earth and bullshit like that, yeah. but silly things about like celebrities and stuff. And he'll come in first thing in the morning and be like, oh, <laughs> mom, 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 mom. and then I'll be like, all right, first of all, where did you hear it? Right. Like, go through the steps. And I'm trying to get him to stop being reactive yeah. to his, you know, him reading the news or whatever it is he may learn. And he's, he's, he's getting a little better on it. But that's the thing that, that I think you have, especially um, in this, damn, I sound so fucking I, old when I say this, but day and age when we have so much information coming right. up. Right. And I think, I think schools, at least good schools, like they teach kids how to decipher mm. what they're reading, whether it's legitimate. I coach like a public speaking team. We have this conversation all the time when you're writing stuff and you're citing sources. If I can pick apart your sources, like you, you're going to have to rewrite the whole thing. It's not yeah. worth your time. Like you have to be able to so tell me why this source is someone I should listen to. If you just said like, Bob Smith said, yep, this is the, the thing that's going on. They know at this point what I'm going to ask. Like, who is this guy? Why should I listen to anything he says? Where was this published? And mm. if you can't, if you can't make a legitimate argument for it, like it's not going to fly. And yeah. and again, it's, it takes a while to get used to this because it's, it's more work to figure mm -hmm. out if something is true than just accept it because you want it to be true. You know, I'm wondering if it has the same kind of effect for the older generations as well, because, you know, in, people that are, are kind of in the middle are more our age, yeah. you know, grew up, we, you know, started when we, there wasn't really internet and we had books and stuff and then we right. stuff off, off online. And then we got to this point where we learned fucking everything, like, a you know, a million things a day. Right. Um, but, you know, we kind of grew up with that process, whereas, you know, some of the older generation, I think, do you ever feel like they're just kind of, you know, experiencing the world in a new way, just like the kids are. So they just want to take everything and believe everything they hear because they've never had to fact check like this before. Yeah. Anger is a big selling point. I mean, the the articles on Facebook, for example, that get more reach than anything else are the ones that make you angry and piss you off the most, those those spread. And again, if you're looking to anger everyone, there's a way to write articles like that. There's a way to only talk about that stuff and pick out the stupidest, silliest little foibles and mm -hmm. blow them up out of proportion, which also makes it a problem because when another side does stuff that it like just the idea that people are talking about the alleged corruption of Joe Biden mm -hmm. while totally missing out on all the like proven documented examples of it on Trump's side. Like that's, that's just annoying as hell. Yeah. Cause it's like some it's, I know it's the old, like, but her emails mm -hmm. argument, but it's like, you took a silly, stupid thing that, all right, let's say it was a, a it shouldn't have happened. But you're taking a small thing that doesn't appear to have any significant consequences while ignoring all the other stuff over here. 
that mm -hmm. to me is disingenuous and people do it all the time with everything it's not just politics they do it with religion they do it with everything else too yeah you know what one thing that i find interesting that um the people that are buying into this this hunter biden story um that you know you have the right over here yelling they're like why is why is this not getting reported on more you know why aren't you listening and so the people that that are on the right that believe the story are wondering the same thing and yet we're all over here like because it doesn't add up and because yeah. you know there are things called facts and and we've gone through this before but it doesn't seem to matter why do you think do you think that in terms of both uh political leading as well as religiosity there is a more likelihood of believing things firsthand um as opposed to uh, us on the left or and or atheists that have a more critical thinking background i mean i think we all want to hear stories that make our side look better and again mm -hmm. when you're as i both of us neither of us voted for like joe biden in the primaries <laughs> like i think and this is the thing if you're the the trump side they were clearly hoping to go against bernie sanders because they had a whole socialist campaign planned out to go against him they would have loved to go against elizabeth warren mm -hmm. joe biden for better or for worse is the most boring candidate mm -hmm. you could have had because he's been in public life forever Anything mm -hmm. bad you could have said about him has been said by everyone he's ever been competing against, mm -hmm. presidential and, and otherwise. It's like nothing they're doing is sticking to him because it's like, really, yeah, you want me to think he's like secretly corrupt? Like he's boring as hell. And yeah. so they're looking for anything. So I think the Hunter Biden story, it's like, look, see, we told you he was corrupt. It's like whatever you were saying about him, which, like you said, the facts don't add up here. Yeah. Other like journalists who are way more interested in breaking a story than helping him politically have looked into it and said, this doesn't make any sense. There's no story here right now. Um, they're trying to throw it at him and they got nothing. Yeah. And so, of course, that story is trying to go viral because they got nothing else. But the upside to it is that the only people who seem to believe it wholeheartedly are the sort of people who would already be voting for Trump. It's not like they're yeah. winning over everybody else because everyone else is like, there's nothing here. Mm. Um, no. And that may be the yeah. one saving grace to like this election and then 2016, which is I think more people are onto the tricks yeah. ahead of time. So maybe they're not going to be stupid enough to fall for it. They're not even trying to hide it anymore, though. They're so blatant about the fact that they're openly cheating now. Yeah, and I voter think... suppression, I think, is easy to explain I mean, to kids, too. Like, just yeah. what do Democrats with their lawsuits or legislation, what are they trying to do? They're trying to make it easier for everyone to vote legally. What are mm -hmm. Republicans trying to do? Stop you from voting, especially if you live in a... Uh, a place where there's a lot of minorities. Yeah. If you live in a place that is a swing state, they are trying to block you from voting. You could see it. Like, I used to think the the dividends to that, that like older people would die off, younger people would totally grow up to be more democratic. And it never quite happens like that. But it does seem that more swing states are in play, question mark, maybe. We'll see. But I think yeah. more people are catching on to that and they're pissed off. Um, and again, when you're, I mean, man, I would hate to be your son right now at his age because things suck right now mm -hmm. and it's ruining, I mean, <laughs> dude, I'm in my thirties, late thirties, like who cares what's going on in my life? But if you're <laughs> 16 and you got to stay yeah. at home and you can't go out with your friends, I'm mm -hmm. holding that against the Republicans the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, and my son has, um, he has lung disease too. So he more susceptible and, and yeah and and you know. being in the middle of a pandemic like who do you want to blame for that mm -hmm. yeah but what do we you know the the fact that he clearly doesn't give a shit about the lives of deaths lives and deaths of anybody in this country he doesn't seem to have any actual policy what yeah. is what do you personally like i know my beliefs on it, or my thoughts on it what do you believe is his driving factor to Trump's? make him so desperate to be what is it trump's or the supporters trump's, yes 
I mean, I think he just likes the power and adoration. Like for a narcissist to have the Mm. whole world constantly talking about you 24 seven, because they have to like, God, can you imagine like going through a week without having to think about this guy or a day or whatever? So, I mean, he, and it also, he has immunity from all his lawsuits. Like being president is the only reason he's not in bigger (laughs) trouble right now. And he has a very strong incentive to not go back to civilian life. Mm -hmm. But for his supporters, the people who are voting for him and stuff, who don't care necessarily about that stuff, it's, uh, I mean, they really do believe he is here for them. He tells them that they're gullible enough to believe it, even if the actual, like, paperwork doesn't show it. The numbers don't add up in their favor. But, like, Mm -hmm. if he, if they feel like they have more power, they, I mean, this was a problem with the Hillary side, which is those rural voters, the ones who are, uh, in poverty, living in poverty or close to it, they feel like nobody's what you mm, muted again. I don't know why that keeps happening. But <laughs> if the ones who are like living in poverty or close to it, like no one pays attention to them and Trump would tell them, no, 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 I'm your guy, which he totally wasn't. Like that's a lie. But he yeah. made them think it. And he was good at that. I will say Democrats seem to be better at that this time around in terms of reaching out to different constituencies. Muted. I have no idea what's going on. I'm not even pushing anything. I wonder if there's a button somewhere. But like there are more constituencies that I feel like I'm seeing this time around. I'm seeing way more progressive religious groups mm-hmm. speaking out. Like they're not letting the religious right get Republicans activated and excited while they sit on the sidelines. They're saying, no, 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 we are here. There's way more of us together than there are of you. And they're they're active and they have large constituencies. Uh, the question is, will it balance out the evangelical right? I've seen, I'm part of a humanist for Biden group, which again, I'm not talking size, but the fact that that exists and it hasn't been like a bad thing like, for the <laughs> campaign, that's awesome. Um, and a lot of people just not staying on the sidelines, which Mm. is good too. I mean, again, who knows what'll happen the day of, uh, when voting ends, but I don't know. I have reasons to be optimistic that I didn't think about four years ago. And I figured out after the fact, like, wow, they, we didn't have the organization in these different areas. And I feel like it's better off again, maybe I'll be wrong, but, um, it does seem better in terms of trying to fix the problems from four years ago. Yeah. Well, I, you know, we have, and I know we said with Clinton that we had the numbers. We seem to have the numbers and much clearer now. That's that's pretty certain it, but mm-hmm. what, or pretty certain, but um, I think one of the biggest problems we face is what happens when he loses, though? Because he kind of seems to have a lot of options right now. I think, you know, he has been playing up, obviously, the mail uh, to, to be able to say, oh, well, there's an issue with the ballot. He's going to say it's rigged no matter what the outcome yeah. is. And if he loses, he's going to pretend like everything was rigged. It's Now, if it's overwhelming, he'll have a hard time trying to say, nope. In every yeah. state, even the ones controlled by Republicans, where I lost, it was all right. Like, and we'll see what the other Republicans do around him. Will they just accept mm-hmm. it? All the senators who maybe, hopefully, will lose. Like, are they going to accept it too? Um, I mean, let's let's assume he loses and it's a transition. Like, and Biden is president. I, I saw this in a tweet. I didn't say this. Someone else said it, but it's like. I hope Biden wins because I will start criticizing him like crazy the day mm-hmm. after he gets into office. Yeah. And I hope all the the Bernie Elizabeth Warren supporters do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. But like you need Biden to win to have a platform yeah. to try to push a more progressive agenda. Um yeah. I, I can't speak much to what if he doesn't leave and stuff. Right now it's get our shit together, make sure people can vote, get in early, have a plan. And it looks like that's the case. It looks like Mm -hmm. more Democrats, certainly than Republicans, but a lot of Democrats are not waiting till the last second. I feel weird because like when in 2016, I voted on election day in the morning Mm -hmm. and walked away thinking, feeling pretty good. 
But it's mm. like, holy crap, I can't even imagine waiting till election day. At the very least, I'll go by myself and wear a mask and do early voting. Like, mm -hmm. but this time around, I'm like, I got my absentee ballot, filled it out as soon as I got it and turned it in like that week. Um, and I feel like more people are doing that in general. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that works. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, I, it, more than just the ballot thing, he's been free this entire past year, he's been setting up just little things here and there, like the whole, um, his kind of mirror to the him working with Russia thing. He's been secretly putting Biden and China together. Like it's a lot of things. And I think what scares me the most is that the reason he wants to push um, Amy Coney, Coney Barrett in so hard is because she will vote for him. You know, if, if he decides to contest this. Um, There's a lot, but that's a lot of stuff that has to happen for it to get there. And, yeah, and I right now, right now, it does, I mean, again, polling, mm -hmm. who knows? It doesn't look like anything is the case that it would get to that point because so many things would have to happen and they would all have to be bad for Democrats for it to get to that point where she could be the deciding factor here. Um, so uh, again, to me, it feels like that one is out of my control. I can't, I can't do anything about that issue. That is for other people to deal with. What I can try to do is make sure everyone in my circles is voting and has voted and are voting for the right people. Um, you know, put the pressure on them to do it, which all of us can do in our circles and yeah. try to advocate for that anywhere I can. Um, especially for the people who just don't think it matters or who think like they want to vote for a third party as a protest vote and how stupid that is right now. Um, that's what I can do to try to help. And there's a lot of people I feel who are off the sidelines now. They are doing stuff in a way they never did years ago. Um, there are more people running for office now that never would have run a few years ago. And all of that, I think, is good for the progressive side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while. Um, but for the Coney Barrett thing, like she'll get confirmed, but I I find it hard to believe that the Supreme Court would have a role in this right now because okay. it would have to be really close and it doesn't look like it's going to be that close right now. Um, yeah. And then, by the way, they should totally expand the court and just nullify everything Republicans have done. Screw it. Yeah. I just, there's, <laughs> um, in terms of this whole voting for third party, like I, I, we were talking about this before the show, actually. Um, it, there is just so much that we our country our world cannot take four more years of and i think I mean, and the people I, who do the protest votes claim that they care about these issues what it says to me is i don't really care about lgbtq rights i don't care if women are forced to give birth against their will i have my principles and i can't vote mm -hmm. for my, like okay fine but i i get the thinking there yeah. But again, how many people do you have to see suffer before you think, all right, I'll get off my pedestal here? Because again, all you're doing is making the Democratic side and the Republicans, for what it's worth, say, okay, I don't need to talk to you. Nothing you say matters because you're useless yeah. to us on election day anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the it's the main reason you need more people to vote in general. Because if I've heard this in atheist circles too, if you can get atheists to vote, not non-religious people anyway, vote at the same percentages that evangel white evangelicals come out. Like, we are basically, there are as many nuns as there are uh, white evangelicals as there are Catholic. We're all like 22-ish percentage of the population, give or take, mm -hmm. depending on the poll. But like, the e white evangelicals, more of them vote. Like, they're a bigger percentage of American yeah. voters than that. We are a much smaller percentage of American voters. So of course politicians don't care about us. We don't yeah. we don't show up. But if we did, and we said, let me tell you what matters to us, church state separation issues, you know, civil rights, social justice, these things matter to most of us. Mm. It would be to their benefit to pay attention to us and care about that sort of thing. So again, the protest vote just says, none of that stuff really matters to me. And again, I know some people who are doing it and I mean, 
I don't think it's worth a wasting my time trying to convince them why they shouldn't. They have enough people doing that. What we can do to help out is make sure anyone who hasn't voted has a way to do it. Make sure the people who might otherwise be on your side are up and doing. Um, dude, just get one person to vote. Now you've nullified the stupid protest vote. <laughs> yeah, um, I am a climate scientist, um, and uh, a lot of like there's so much that's gone on during the uh, Trump presidency. It's it's hard to overlook things, but. Um, if you take a look at what he has changed and the rollbacks he's made and the laws that he's changed, not to mention the pipelines that he's allowed to open and taking us out of Paris and, and so many things. He yeah. has uh, 30 years worth of progress that we've done in the climate science community. He right. got rid of almost immediately, let alone uh, over the, you know, it, it was within a year he, he got rid of a bulk of that, putting a, an oil guy in charge of the EPA, that kind right. of stuff. We are unfortunately at a point in time that is very critical to being able to not all die. Yeah. <laughs> it, you really know? demoralizing to see how much damage a guy who I would argue is really bad at even pushing through his own agenda like, mm -hmm. imagine how much damage he could do if he actually had any sense about how politics worked. Um, he could do way more damage, but he's too stupid to hurt more people somehow. But you're right. He's done a plenty of damage there. Now, some of it you could try to reverse, but we lose time with a new president stuff. But again, you also, even with Joe Biden in office and a competent person in charge of these various departments and stuff, you still need to push them further. Mm -hmm. And again, I think there's momentum on that side but again that's that's the idea like nothing good will happen if republicans stay in power but if you want a chance to fix some of the damage they've done if you want a chance for it to get even better and more progressive than it used to be which you know it wasn't where it needed to be to begin with mm -hmm. uh even when obama was in office like none of that happens unless joe biden wins right now and then you then you fight him then you get more stuff in your direction what i again what i don't get are the people who are like i oh, care so much seconds. yeah I just, i'm gonna re, um i'm cutting out sure. keep talking saying okay. what you're saying but i'm just gonna refresh so That's you know what I'm doing um, when I, yeah I but like if you care about any of that sort of stuff the only way that's gonna happen is if biden wins and he can appoint people and then you push him to go even more progressive i don't get the people who think you know, I'm in the Green Party. I care about the environment. So I will vote protest, not give a vote that could oppose Trump. And if he wins and he does more damage to the environment, like that seems so counterintuitive to me that I, I just totally don't understand that line of thinking. So that's why I hope no one is doing that. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I have like a billion different Wi-Fi's. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's so frustrating the fact that there's it's one of the issues that, that you can just say this is a real problem that as much as we want to be able to four or eight years from now vote in the perfect fucking liberal candidate uh a that's probably not gonna happen ever because you know nobody's really gonna be perfect but there's nope. just you have a better chance of electing a perfect purpose person locally where there's fewer votes on the mm -hmm. table and if you run which yeah. is the only way you're going to find a candidate that you really like and like most of us hate ourselves what are you talking about <laughs> so like you're right like you're not going to get the perfect candidate to me elizabeth warren was the closest to my sent like my mentality mm -hmm. um but again if if biden wins more of her agenda will get through than not yeah. And so that matters. And I'm just, I'm trying to think of like, for people who are non-religious, especially, I know atheists are like herding cattle. I know we don't have everything in common, but we do have a lot of stuff in common. And I'm just thinking, what are issues that matter to most of us? Church state separation, science, like mm -hmm. caring about what experts in these fields have to say, LGBTQ rights, sex education, education in general, like, name your topic that you are passionate about trump is not good on those issues i i don't know 
the things historically that atheists have cared about because it touches on that intersection of religion and pol policy. Mm. I can't think of a single topic where Trump's policies are better or Republican policies are better for our side yeah. than not. Um, mm. Like, just, I mean, if, again, if Christians or even atheists are just like, well, the tax cuts are better for me because I'm rich and I don't care about anyone else. Yeah. Say that. That would be honest. That's what yeah. they then say that. But they don't. They never do. Mm -hmm. No, it is. It is very frustrating. And you're a, a big advocate for um, not only running locally, but voting locally and, and things like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> are you involved a lot in, in the politics of your area? Do you go to like... Um, the town hall meetings and things like that it's a totally fair question and i feel bad to say i don't and the reason is um <laughs> part of part of it is because i was moving recently but um more of it it's because my my main focus has been writing about national politics and state level politics and so i feel like i have my fix of it and so the last thing i want to do yeah. in my spare time is go to that um mm -hmm. but i did i will say i worked on a local campaign uh two years ago um, for a judge, a circuit judge. And it was, it was, I went to, to parades to, to promote what he was doing. I helped him film some videos. He did get elected. He won that race. It was close, but he won that race. And that was exciting to do. Like, it's absolutely something I would do in the future. But like, in terms of bandwidth for me personally, I feel like between the stuff I do for national stuff and state stuff uh, politically and watching it, to add to that plate all the local issues and stuff um mm. i don't think i have it in me right now um but that said i do i do really try to follow local reporters and what they're mm -hmm. saying about it because they do follow it and i live in a big enough uh part outside chicago but i live in a big enough place where there are local reporters who go to those meetings and cover it well yeah. um and i can keep up and i i know who's running in those local offices and I know if they're doing a good job or not. Like one of the things I've seen, my congresswoman is uh, Lauren Underwood, who is this relatively moderate Democrat who like won a surprise victory a couple of years ago. But one of the things I was thinking is it's kind of weird when you have a politician who she's not as progressive as I would be, but I really like, like, she's fine. She's doing mm. a good job, which is nice because it means I can put my focus elsewhere I don't have to worry about my vote in my community because she seems to have the support she needs here. I can yeah. focus on other races where it may not get as much attention, try to shine a spotlight on them when necessary. Um, but in general, I think, look, Either. <laughs> not everyone can do everything, but everyone can get involved. Uh, no, no, I think if, if, I'm sorry. You care about these issues at all, which again, if you're the sort of person, if you're the sort of atheist who is watching a couple of people talk about this stuff on YouTube, you yeah. care to some degree. So you can do something about it. If I mean, get involved locally, but also care enough about it to, to do something about it nationally. It doesn't have to be giving money. You can do phone banking, uh, texting, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And just be informed, like, yeah. and make sure that people who care about are informed too. I think that's, you know, really important because, yeah. you know, I think we let we let too much slide. Like, you know, it's, I, it's I've said this before. Like, not everyone has the luxury to stay as informed. Like, this is what I do. I better be informed, otherwise, what the hell am I doing? Not everyone has that luxury. They have kids, they have jobs, they have things that keep them away from newspapers and the news, and that is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but if that is the case, like all you have to do right now, like if you have people you trust who are telling you how to vote, who do pay attention to this and who you have some respect for, who are saying, listen, I need your vote for this. I can help you as much as I can, what, I'll take you to the poll and back. I'll get you signed up for the absentee ballot. Like, you do whatever you need to do. It doesn't have to take long. And yeah. I say that even in places where I've seen poll lines get really long. You don't have to be the person waiting in line necessarily. Um, but if you care about people, if you care about any of this stuff, if you're stuck in your house because Republicans suck it in, like, doing preventative cares during the pandemic, like... Mm -hmm. 
I can't imagine this stuff doesn't matter to you when you've seen the effect of this. No, I think um, other than the the uh, environmental stuff for me uh, personally, the, the hardest thing watching um, in the past four years has been how Trump has allowed for hate to be acceptable again. Not. It, more out in the open, I should say. And, like he's and, uh, doing it, his followers do it, and of mm -hmm. course they're not going to say anything about it. And it just becomes a norm, like mm -hmm. a political norm, until someone in that party decides to do something about it. Um, and none of them have the courage. Like, do you realize for the past four years, if you had like three Republican senators who said, you know what? we are going to vote with Democrats on everything just to spite you until you start acting like an adult, having mm -hmm. meetings about these issues. Um, if you want your judges passed, we're not going to vote for any of them. We will vote against them on principle unless you do the following things. They had that leverage for four years. They never, I mean, I'm talking about like Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, like all these people who have been there for a while, Jeff Flake, who never got together to do any of this. But now that some of them are out of office, they'll spend all this yeah. time. Even Mitt Romney this week is like, let me tell you why Trump is being nasty. Like you yeah. can do so There are three senators right now who are decrying everything Trump is doing, who if they vote no on Barrett, which they haven't said they wouldn't do. They just said, like, sure, we can go on with the hearings. Mitt Romney said, you can go on with the hearings. He didn't say he would vote for her. But, like, if mm. they vote no, that would be something substantive that could help. Um, but they haven't done that for years. Like, one time with the Obamacare vote, like, did they do something decent? But by and large, none of them have the courage to do anything about this, which is infuriating because then it's not Trump that's the problem it's mm. the whole damn party and i'm genuinely hopeful that with the senate race like where even the not swing state republicans but like <laughs> south carolina mississippi alaska where you have other states that are in play man if you if you see some of them lose mm. then the rest of these people are gonna freak the fuck out and that would be great because maybe yeah. they would realize they don't get to live in the luxury of saying i live in a red state so mm -hmm. i'll do whatever i want yeah and i think um you know part of the the thing that one of the things that's most infuriating about it is the fact that they weren't really afraid of what he could do it was like they were afraid of him calling them names and tweeting yeah. with them which he does to women especially but like democrats in the house yeah. all the time and they've learned how to deal with it but it's not mm -hmm. easy and yeah. yet like whatever jeff flake is like oh no he's going to say something nasty about me or susan collins doesn't what was it joni ernst in iowa they're like or i'm sorry martha mcsally in arizona they're like uh, do you like him? Do you support him? Do you, what was the, I forgot the question they asked her. Like, are you proud of him? Mm -hmm. Whatever it was. It was a gimme question if yeah. you're a Republican senator and she tried to avoid it Ugh. because she didn't want to say that, but mm -hmm. also she wants his support. Mm -hmm. like, oh my God. I know it's politics, but get a spine. Yeah. At some point. Yeah, exactly. Grow a little bit of a spine because do you think that we're, um, in in november if they were just to get if the republicans were just to get completely booted in the ass because they decided to support trump yeah. and flip the switch and do you think that that would turn their party around regardless of whether or not trump stays in office not immediately for sure mm -hmm. um because in 2012, I remember Romney lost to Obama in the re-election and stuff. And they actually put out a whole document saying, here's where we screwed up. <laughs> and then what happened as a result of that? Nothing. They just yeah. tossed that aside and in 2016 went with Trump. So I don't know that it's going to change because look at who their voters are. Yeah. Like, what's the incentive to change when you basically brainwash these people into just like, what's their platform? It's whatever Trump wants. Mm -hmm. That is their party now. Like yeah. the party is, is broken. So I don't know that the party can adjust. All you can hope is that they just keep dwindling and lose power 
and eventually they'll grow out of it some of them and mm -hmm. the rest of them too bad you don't have any power who cares like lucky for you the our side of the issue doesn't want to dismiss you like <laughs> the healthcare will still apply to you we're not trying to hurt <laughs> right that's where you're lucky whereas the other side is like screw you everyone who's not like us but mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to change overnight. I think some of those politicians would be like, well, now that Trump is gone, let me tell you how much I secretly <laughs> hated him. And yeah. it'll be BS. And mm. mean, it, nothing will change, I don't think, until you get more progressive Democrats beating out the moderate Democrat and really moving one party to where more young people are at. Because I think the Republicans are a lost cause. I don't think like, even their... Uh, prospects for like four years from now who like nikki haley some of these other people they're not better than trump mm. like they just don't say stupid shit as much <laughs> their, their ideology isn't that far different from him so mm. they're not going to change all you can hope is that you defeat them they just kind of dwindle away it happened in new zealand this weekend where the opposition party that's like nope we don't like the prime minister she got coronavirus down to like two and it went up to double digits. Like, how dare she? And everyone's <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? Have you seen the United States? <laughs> and then they reelect her with the majority. And now it's up to her. Like, can she actually mm -hmm. get her party to do all the stuff she promised, but couldn't quite mm -hmm. get done? That's what has to happen now. And then if it goes well, great. Like, it'll be harder to vote against them. But like, well, I, 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 let me add one more thing to that, which is, I thought George W. Bush was bad enough that that would never happen again. I was clearly wrong. It took eight years for that to happen again. Um, so, like, the fear is if Trump loses, oh, at least we're not going to have someone else like him. That's not true. We could totally go right back to that in four years. And if you ask people in four years, like, dude, don't you remember the pandemic and the chaos and the constant, we got to think about this idiot? And they won't. Like, it'll be forgotten. And that's scary to think about, but that's what happens when the party just doesn't die out. Yeah. Well, and this was something we talked about um, in, when we did our panel show is the fact that there is no platform right now. They have you, no ideas. Do you, and, and that's just because he just doesn't have one. He didn't finish any of, you know, any of the things he claimed that he was going to right. do before. Judges, you, and that is it. Yeah. Well, yeah. His... Him and this fucking judges. Yeah. Um, but do you think that works in their favor, though, if he does win? Uh, say it in the long shot that he does yeah. win. They have nothing that they have to, like, say, oh, we promised to do this and we did it. Right. Like, I mean, they're not going to. They don't have any ideas for a second term. They're in I mean, the Republican ideology for years now, uh, this goes back decades, has just been... We don't want to govern. We hate government. We want government to die. Let states do all the work. We don't want to do anything because we think it's bloated. And so they do the bare minimum and get the hell out. And you have, like, that's, what's the point of having a platform when you don't actually care? Like, a platform is useful when you're trying to govern and say, this is what I stand for. Republicans, like, literally, they're just saying, we don't stand for anything. And honestly, we don't even care at this point. So if he wins... Even if he had like a Republican Senate still, what, what are they going to do? They're not going to do anything, but that's the point. They don't want to do anything. That's what they like. Yeah. But if you're, if the argument from our side is, well, there are people suffering or people that need jobs. It's like, well, yeah, well, you should get them. What do you want from <laughs> us? Like that is their, their dream scenario is we don't have to do anything. You guys figure it out. And I think the Democratic side is, but there's so much government could do to make things better for so many people. And, but we need it to be effective and we need it to actually work. Yeah. This is what the like Elizabeth Warren side was basically saying. Here's all the ways, like if you made the post offices banks where you didn't need like mm -hmm. a thing and everyone could just have an account that yeah. was like, that would help so many people who can't afford like an actual bank account. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. It would make the post office even better and stronger. Yeah. That's the government the being, make money. Yeah, like that's the government being effective. And mm -hmm. the Republican side is who needs the post office? Just use UPS. That's better for it. Like it's, it's a different philosophy. So 
no, they, they don't have a platform, but even if they won, that's just four more years of nothing happening except just getting worse everywhere. Um, and that's the fear. It's not that they're going to suddenly pass some bill that will make things bad. It's that everything just dies out. And that is a different problem. But like one of the things to think about is like nuclear waste, for example. We actually have to like contain it and make sure it doesn't get out. And so, And there are people who do that. And yeah. they're government workers. And like, what's going on now? Who the hell knows? <laughs> like, who knows who's in charge and maintaining that stuff? Like, you want mm. people who know what they're doing in charge of these big, giant departments. And right mm. now, that's just not necessarily the case. And that it's is mostly a not the case. He, yeah. he, the people that he has appointed have been nowhere near, either nowhere near qualified for the job or just been complete sycophants or been like with the EPA, the opposite of what we want right. or need even. I don't, I don't want to speak for all of it. No, but um, secretary of education, which like, I remember when I was a teacher, terrible. When, I, when I was a teacher, mm. that was like first, uh, first term mostly of Obama. And again, mm -hmm. it's, it's someone who's not necessarily against our side, but we actually had discussions and criticisms of that. What yeah. do you do now when mm -hmm. it's someone who's actively working against you? It's yeah. a whole different thing altogether. And it would, it would be nice to not have to fight the people who are supposed to be on your side. And that mm -hmm. is what could happen in a couple of weeks if people get their shit together. Uh, my friend Nock says you have tech demons. That was, that's the problem. And his name is actually Nakasuchi. Um, it, he has a channel of rage, and I want to read his comment to you that he said earlier. Um, he says you are one of his greatest influences. I went a different route on the nice part. That's the name of rage, but his challenging of religion and Christianity inspired me to do what I do. Oh, that's that's very nice of you to say. I'm glad I could play a role in that. And all I would say is uh, one thing that's changed for me that I hope you take into account because maybe you don't have to deal with it is mm -hmm. I try really hard to, to not throw good religious people under the bus because mm -hmm. um, there are so many religious people who I disagree with and I think are wrong on the God thing, but they're genuinely like they're using their faith to do good stuff. I know there are some atheists who would just say like, but they're wrong on the God thing. So let's fight them mm -hmm. on that. And that to me is a, not strategic approach it doesn't help and honestly they're probably they share my values a lot more and so i mean i am i used to i think i used to be way more against like interfaith cooperation and mm. working with religious allies because because of the god gap there and now mm. it's like no i'm we're totally mm. working together on hand this. in hand let's just do this thing we have bigger issues to yeah. deal with and once we're there we can argue about God and all that, but until then, mm. so to, to the person with the rage name, like, yes, challenge religion, challenge, uh, challenge the bad critical thinking, challenge bad ideas. But look, everyone, even the people you agree with, everyone's wrong about different things and you will want to fight them on it. Pick your battles, pick them wisely, go after the stuff that, that really hurts people, makes a difference. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. um, that is where politics is now, where religion used to be. Religion does not hurt as many people as it used to, in my opinion, on in the U.S. for mm -hmm. certain issues. Whereas, like bad thinking, irrational thinking in politics is genuinely putting everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, wrapping up a little bit, what um, what scares you the most about this upcoming election, and what do you have the most optimism for? I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that things will work at the presidential level and hopefully at the Senate level too. I mean, what I would love to tell you that scares me is that even if Democrats take over the Senate and win the presidency, we will kind of lose the energy that drove us for four years. And like people will just think, all right, things are better now. And they won't be like, this is the whole reason progressives don't love Biden. It's like, well, no, he's not the progressive we wanted him to be. Like, hopefully that will happen, that he will win, that Democrats will get in these positions of power. Mm -hmm. And that's when the good work can begin of 
organize, get your people elected locally, get the more progressive candidates winning these primaries and stuff like that. That's the thing that scares me because I think a lot of people have been so burned out, especially over the past few months and the past year on politics and the election, that as soon as it's over, they will hopefully, I mean, I don't blame them, but they will just kind of go back to hopefully the way things were. And that's kind of what got us into this mess. I don't want people to get complacent. I yeah. want you to get active. And if you're not active at in, like I said, I have ways of being active because this is kind of what I do, but that's a luxury that I know I have. But if you don't, like there are so many ways to get active locally or at the state level or uh, informing people if you're on YouTube and this is what you like or pick your social media platform and, and talk about this stuff that you are passionate about. Like, don't let this activist side of you die out. And that is something I'm genuinely uh, fearful of, but I'm not there yet. Cause like first, first we got to win. Then I can be yeah. disappointed by that. But right now, like, people seem to be doing what they need to do for for trump to be defeated so i'm i'm hopeful hopeful man i don't know yeah i, I can't allow myself to get hopeful because i was hopeful four years ago and that was a mistake it's, it's almost scary to to just say the words i'm hopeful right now yeah. so and by the way i was i was hopeful great, four great years ago back. and that got ruined yeah i live near chicago in 2008 i went to the downtown Chicago the night Obama was elected, um, not knowing politics as much and not paying attention to politics as much as I do now, but thinking, I think this guy has a chance of winning and going there and having them announce on the big screen TVs that he won and being around strangers, lots of whom were like people of color who were, uh, I think the weirdest thing about that night, I mean, you could go on YouTube, you could search for Obama Grant Park like 2008 and watch those videos. They will make you cry if you care about this stuff. Mm. But the weirdest thing to me is when it was all over and he finished his speech and people were going home, I was walking back to my car. It was like a mile walk because you had to park really far away. And I was just walking past people. What do you think the atmosphere was like when you are leaving that environment? Maybe you think, man, people are going to be celebrating like crazy. And it wasn't. It was silent. People were like, holy shit, I can't believe that just happened. Like just walking away stunned because of how amazing that w just was and how much yeah. hope they had about it. And to go from that to like, oh, my God, everything sucks all the time now. <laughs> like I'm, I'm genuinely hopeful for that to change. And there won't be any parties or anything this time around like that. But it's like, it would be nice to know, dude, for the next four years, my kids will live in a better place mm -hmm. or that I don't have to, I could think about other stuff instead of, we can go back to talking about religion on the yeah. channel. <laughs> that so would be fun. How about <laughs> that? We'll, we'll make it, we'll make a date, you and I, Yeah. that after the election, we will, you will come back on my channel I'm and fine. we'll talk yeah. about anything the fuck else other than politics that, that, that would be so much fun <laughs> i'm so in for that look yeah to that. well i want to thank you so much again um for not only coming on the panel show but for doing this as well um i'm very you know like i said i i'm new to the community so i'm still meeting new people i was so lucky to have met you on god's oh, training is um you're uh, like the rage says you're you are inspiring just keep using that voice of yours and we will listen and thank you so much for everything you do really. thank you that, yeah. that means a lot and thank you for doing shows like this and it's it's so awesome to watch people who are relatively new to, to atheism and and the youtube side of things in general and seeing people put out their voice and they're not afraid to use it and talk about it. Cause um, I think that means a lot to people who are in the same position you're at and, yeah. and may soon be where it's like, it helps to see someone who's kind of going through that in the same place that you were a couple years ago and stuff. And mm -hmm. I've said this to, to a lot of people in the past, like whoever you watch, whoever you listen to that you were influenced by, um, there are other people listening who do not connect at all with those people and they, they but they would connect with your voice so to anyone who's watching out there too like 
whatever you think you're good at, just use it. Use TikTok, use whatever it is that you mm -hmm. use regularly and use that as your voice. And you, hands down, there hasn't been one time where I've heard from someone who does that regularly and has not heard from someone who said that helped me, that changed me. So thank you. Awesome. Um, do you have uh, anything to shill coming up? I got nothing to shill. Go yeah. go friendlyatheist.com. Subscribe yeah. to my YouTube channel. There are more videos coming out soon. Mm -hmm. yep. Please, I put um I didn't put your website in. I'll go back and change that, but good. I put the rest of your links in the description. So please go check out Hamid and um you know again thank you so much and everybody um next week I have Dr. Josh back on. Um and we won't be talking politics because <laughs> Dr. Josh and I never do. So you know, uh, just remember to please go vote, you guys. Um, you know, listen to your voice that says, "Let's let's change things." If you're in America, if you're not in America, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is an America-centric stream, but shit yeah. is getting real here, so we just have to talk about it for a while. But yes. um, yeah. uh, and just remember, everybody, um, think critically. Thank you all for coming. Good night. <laughs>